all right guys this is amin ardo cap and again i am welcoming you in my another video and this video is based on the cosmological data analysis Right. I have already made several videos on cosmological data analysis and the Python coding, but I think I feel like that I have to again start from the basics and give you more depth that how one can start from the model and write the. So in this video, you are going to first understand what is what what is the meaning of the model, parameters. When you go into any conferences, you heard some words, some keywords like priors, posteriors. Uh, and uh, some chi square or some other things so over here i'm going to exactly show you that what is the meaning of these kind of you know words and how we can accommodate in our coding so first of all i'm going to define you the model the simplest model is i'm i'm just for first of all going to take lambda serial model if you have not heard about lambda cdm model you can always check out my other videos where i have discussed explicitly about lambda cdm model lambda for the dark energy and cdm stands for pole dark matter so if you are accommodating lambda cdm model along with the flrw matrix so we have flrw matrix which is given by ds square is equal to minus dt square with a scale factor a square which is just, uh, which is a uh, function of time and let us say i am talking about the flat geometry of the universe so this is the flrw metric and if you solve with the einstein's field equation you will get two important equation one equation is 3h square is equal to kappa square kappa has the mass inverse length and uh, you can have this rho matter rho matter means i am differing over here core dark matter as you understand that in our universe we have at most uh 25 to 26 percent of dark matter and rest is the dark energy and the baryonic density is coming about to be 0.026 percent so this is the whole structure of the universe whole budget of the universe so we have rho matter plus rho dark energy now this rho dark energy is constant because the pressure of this rho dark energy is minus of the energy density of the constant quantity over here the pressure for dark matter is zero because this quantity is pressureless just like a dust particle and second friedman equation which we also refer to as right other equation 2s dot plus 3h square is equal to minus kappa square pressure of the dark matter and pressure of cylinder along with these two equations we have two more equations which we can call as the fluid equation of motion which is actually telling you the conservation of the matter quantities so for an example we have for the rho matter which is d rho by dt which is given by as rho m dot plus 3 h rho m plus p m is equal to zero and we have rho lambda dot 3 h rho lambda plus p of lambda is equal to zero now if you invoke this quantity that pressure is equal to negative of the energy density then it immediately gives you that some con some kind of constant which is basically rho lambda becomes rho lambda zero or low lambda c and so so this is the constant quantity so dark energy is kind of cosmological constant so from here you can see that this differential equation gives you a constant quantity on the other hand if you try to solve this one you will have rho m dot plus 3 h h i can written as is the hubble parameter d a over d t times 1 by a rho m and now there is no any p m therefore we have rho m now if you try to solve it you will get that rho m is equal to rho m 0 some constant and a to the power minus q this is the scale factor and one of the most important relation that we have is that the in the scale factor is basically inversely proportional to or inverse to one plus red shift so z over here is your red shift so whenever you see the cosmological data set they are taking with respect to the red shift red shift is basically telling you that how far is the galaxy or at which red shift the galaxy is 
So in another way, the redshift is basically giving you the time quantity or time or time uh, time dimension of the universe as you can understand. So, so redshift is the very important quantity which you basically measuring from the light that you are receiving from any galaxy or any other things. And as the photons is basically arriving and because of the expansion of the universe, the wavelength of the photon get red shifted. As you can understand from this, as you can understand the concept of Doppler shift and all this. So this is the red shifting. Means that the wavelength is have now increased. The photon, let us say the wavelength of this one is this one because of the expansion. Now this wavelength has increased. So as the wavelength is increasing, it is actually going towards the red shifting. Understood. So this is the basic thing. Now, if you solve it, you know that what is the solution of rho m, you know the solution of rho lambda, and you can easily find out what is this 3h square plus something. So over here, I can simply write here 3h square is equal to kappa square. All right. And I can write over here that rho m 0. Now, this 0 is the quantity at present. So whenever we are over here at the present moment, we are telling you that this is m0 because we can say that t is equal to 0 or z is equal to 0. So t is equal to 0, z is equal to 0 or a is equal to 1 basically shows the present time of the universe. All right. So rho m0 is the present time and over here I am writing a to the power minus 3 plus rho of lambda. All right. So rho of lambda c or rho of lambda 0, you can see whatever you write, you can write. Understood. Now over here, I can write is that all right. I need to find the Hubble quantity or Hubble constant from here. So as you can understand that Hubble constant is generally written as at 0 or the Hubble quantity at the present time. It's also same. So I can simply write it that, okay, h square, I can normalize with h 0 square is basically is equal to rho m0 kappa square over 3 at 0 square plus rho lambda 0 kappa square over 3 at 0 square. Now when you uh, normalize any density parameter with respect to kappa square over 3 h square or you can just say that this is another quantity we are defining as the critical density at present is as 3h square over kappa square at 0 square over kappa square. So this is the critical density of the present universe at present universe at a present time. Understood? So this critical density can also become our time constant if as I am representing h is not a time h is, a, h is a, generally a function of time. But when I am writing h0 becomes a constant h or but the Hubble quantity the value of Hubble uh, quantity at a present time. So rho c0 is the critical density of the universe at a present time, which is basically a constant quantity. So whenever I am taking a ratio of any matter quantity with respect to the critical density, then I can just write over here omega m0. Over here, I have a to minus 3, a to the power minus 3 plus, and I can write over here omega lambda 0. Any doubt? So over here we have h0 and I can just simply multiply with h0 square. Now again in terms of redshift I can simply write it as h, is, h square is equal to h0 square omega m0 1 plus z to the power cube plus omega lambda z. So in order to constrain the h0 as you have heard that I want to find that what is the how we can find the expansion of the universe h0 is basically telling you that how fast the universe is expanding so this h0 quantity has to be measured now the universe is vast how do you know that the baryonic matter or cold dark matter is of some percentage or the dark energy which is over here is of some percentage understood so these quantities, these fractional densities one requires to measure from the observational data. Now you have some observation data which is required to be fit and after using the statistical technique which is called the Monte Carlo, uh, Monte Carlo uh, technique MC. MC, we can actually constrain these model parameters h0 square and omega h. So I have to first write express as s is equal to h0 square root of omega m0 1 plus z cube plus omega lambda 0. Mind it that h is for now for this observed universe h cannot be uh, 
negative so here i am taking the positive sign of h and neglecting the negative sign all right so now the problem is that we have this is called our model this is required to be fitted against data in this model what is unknown quantity i can see over here that i have a known quantity h0 omega m0 omega lambda zero, right three quantities but using the same equation i can easily find determine this omega lambda zero how i can say that at z is equal to zero at present time the hubble quantity becomes h zero so this is again a differential equation so i can we have derived everything from differential equation so i can just take one more input and i can just simply say that all right I can invoke at s is equal because this is your function of time or function of z all right so i can say that z is equal to zero h becomes h zero h zero omega m zero z is equal to zero omega m zero and omega lambda zero right is there any doubt i hope so this is one and if you square it you will get omega m zero plus omega lambda zero hence i can express my omega lambda zero is equal to one minus omega m zero now this is basically all this is also called a constraint equation constraint equation from the hubble parameter or friedman equation constrained hubble constrained from the hubble equation or the or the friedman equation so the friedman equation itself you know imposing a vital constraint understood so whatever i have the model over here i am writing it I have one more constraint omega lambda zero. I can express as one minus omega m zero. So again, I can rewrite the above equation as h of z is equal to h zero over here omega m zero one plus z to the power cube and one minus omega m zero. Now tell me how many model parameters we have one and so now we have two model parameters. So first of all. What we have done so far, we have written the Friedman equation, first Friedman equation, and we have written second Friedman equation, though we don't have any requirement of the second equation right now. Now we have the fluid equations, rho m dot, and from where I have found out that how the matter is evolving with redshift or time, or simply over here, I have this rho lambda equation of this state, and we found that. If the pressure becomes negative of the energy density, then this becomes the rho uh, lambda density will becomes a constant. We have used the relation scale factor is inversely proportional to red shift and at time t is equal to zero, z is equal to zero and a is equal to one, it signifies you basically that the present moment. I have also defined rho c zero, which is called the critical density of the universe at present time, 3h is dot square by kappa square basically kappa is equal to if i'm recalling perfectly it is basically 8 pi z all right 1 over 8 pi z and kappa has you have to mind it that kappa has the mass inverse dimension all right so kappa may be square root of 8 pi z maybe it is minus or something like that i have some confusion which can be clarified i will uh give you some kind of tag thing all right, Hz is equal to H0 square root of omega m0 1 plus Z square root 1 minus omega m0. So this is the model that now it is prepared. Now, one important thing is that this square root is valid. As you can see over here, this omega lambda 0. Whenever we are seeing that in our universe, we expecting that the energy density of the universe or whatever the quantity that is present in the universe has to be zero, has to be positive. So I am referring that omega lambda has to be greater than 0. So omega m0 is also greater than 0, but you can see that we have a stringent constraint because omega m0 cannot exceed 1 because otherwise omega lambda 0 would be negative. So these guys has to be, you know, it has to be greater than omega m0 is actually between 0 to. And similarly, you will have omega lambda 0 between 0 to. So all these quantities are basically, you know, uh, following the Friedman constraint relation. So here we have the model and the proper range of the model parameters, all right? And these model parameters are also, you know, we can assign that omega m0 between 0 to 1. These are called priors on model parameters. So because in, uh, in your MCMC, you have to first define that in which range these model parameters are basically valid. Okay, because you know the machine cannot itself take any number 
you have to first assign that okay this is the range in which i want to you know search that i my model parameters will be you know uh, will happen but the problem is that over here i don't know where would be the model parameters although here i can find it okay this is the range but you know in some i understand that omega m0 should be between 0 to 1 but what would be the range of h0 i don't have any data then how do i know that h0 would be have any range so for that you know people have found out that you have different different data right so people have the red shift data let us say that uh, this is when you are measuring the supernovae data and this is the supernova distance modulus with respect to z and you have the data like this and when you try to first of all you have to what you have to do is that you can take this equation and numerically try to fit with the data so this is for the supernova data now you can choose omega m0 something automatically this will be fixed and you can also choose h0 so if you choose h0 this curve will be like this if you choose h0 let us say 40 this curve like this if h0 would be like uh, 78 like this so you can say that okay my data is here so this suggests that your h0 is between such a that such that this graph this curve whatever you know your model you are fitting up to this range understood so from there you can simply fix that okay h0 must be between 40 to let us say 100 because if you go beyond then this curve will not be aligned with the data so this is again a 12 level you know uh, experiment thing you have some data points and you want to fit the curve and you understand that some points are aligned like this then this is how you have to plot these things some people say that okay how do i know the bound this is the way to do you know so the bound that you can choose omega m0 or anything and you just vary this thing numerically you don't have to do any you know write the code you can just use the mathematics and you try to plot the graph from here and you just simply try to sketch this thing that okay for which value of h0 you are getting the curve in this particular range similarly we have another data set which is called the hubble data set in which they have you know from the different different sources bow sources some sn sources supernova sources they have tried they have binned the hubble data at z with different different red shift for an example some edge z as you are you know as you can see over here from this graph that let us say omega m0 is a constant quantity but as your z is increasing when the z is increasing it basically gives you the past of the universe right because if the light is coming very far from the universe then z becomes very large so as z cannot be negative because if z becomes a negative it shows the future epoch right so z is always an increasing function which is basically hinting you the past epoch of the universe past time of the universe so z is increasing as the z is increasing this is basically increasing so as z is eventually increases so if you see look at the data which i will show you that when z is equal to 0 0.03 let us say it were very present moment this is approximately 68 or 67 but as you let us say z1 this has become now 100 and it is becoming 1.2 it has become 150 and up to as you go to it becomes 200 like this so this is when you're talking about the beginning of hubble data so if you have ever seen the osd data plot you can see that there is a z and there is a z and this is how they are taking some you know some data set with some error bars and so on so as you can see from the data you can again replot numerically and you can see that if your h is approximately 70 this is how this graph will look like if the h is 68 this is graph will look like if it is 40 this is the way it is looking like if you are taking 100 it's the way it's look like so you can say that you cannot you know if you choose z is equal to 10 there is no point because it is again you know data is here and your curve will be like this there is no use so you have to work intelligently people can say anything but you have to understand it you know have you forgotten the 12 level mathematics or 12 level the plotting way if the data are here then you can just go like this in this you know area you can search there is no point of you know searching the whole lot of thing because you understand you have already very different different edge and omega m0 that what is the how your model is basically giving you everything so but what you right now is doing is that you could just want to find the edge what would be the best edge so this is called the fitting of your model or whatever the model it is with the data and you try to measure that okay this is the statistically 
what we have got that h0 and omega 0 because there is no way you can you know measure directly h0 this is the you know a statistical way that is the problem you know when we are doing the any experiment in our laboratory we have certain data sets and we can you know extract those information but for the cosmological perspective the uh, it is an open system and many things happen therefore we have to rely on the statistical technique and therefore that's why the error is more or less as in a significant order so now you understood this thing. So now coming to the part of the coding part all right so one in thing is important is that what we call uh, the terminology we are saying that prior prior is the model parameters which is basically depend uh, represented by theta and over here we have the mod uh, model parameters are omega m0 and h0 and prior is basically the range at which we want to give to them so omega m0 as we have already seen in so many uh, things that omega m0 is basically from 0 to 0 0.5 because we are we have only 25 percent of you know uh, dark matter so i am going to write it omega m0 and h0 i have intelligently found that i should keep it between 40 to let us say 100 or something like that, 90 or something like that all right there is no problem i cannot do, i should not go beyond uh beyond this one because intelligently we have to you know do it so because i can save my whole lot of you know cpu hours all right and then there is a thing called likelihood all right what is the likelihood likelihood basically giving you the pro probability of the model parameter against the data so experimentally you have h data all right given the data you want to find the probability of you know having this omega m0 that is defining something so when you see that s data you have some s data we have z and you have error in h we are not considering error in z but we have to consider error in s so first of all in order to find the likelihood or log likelihood what we are basically defining is a chi square this is called chi square all right and this chi square is basically defining as that all the data points let us say i goes to n is for the number of data points the data minus theory let us say i am having s data minus s theory over the error in h error in h and i am going to make it whole lot of square so that this every this quantity in over here is basically positive quantity all right and and when you take this probability because this is defined as e to the power minus x square by 2 and we can write as log of this probability log of this probability then i will have minus 0 0.5 into chi square so what we are basically interested in the log of this and it will automatically determine that what would be something so the, in the mcmc code it is already you know everything has been done you have to just define as what is d minus t by sigma in some places if you work with a supernova data you will have to define as the covariance matrix so for the supernova case for supernova you have data minus theory in terms of matrix transpose you can have the covariance matrix this covariance matrix is basically one by sigma square and this data minus theory and the sum over i is equal to one to the number of data points so you will get this only one number out of it so it will have multiple iterations when you run the mcmc it will have multiple iterations and it will try to predict that what was let us say one iteration you will get another one chi square in second one you will get another chi square right and it will just try to you know see that which if you the chi square is converging or not if chi square is not converging now it is the now your model will not converge as you can see that if you choose some other priors then again <laughs> your model will be way far then your data sets that's why i'm saying that whenever you try to fit your model with any data sets what you should do is that first of all you just plot the data visually and you you have to, whenever you have a model you try to see that okay how you're numerically you know for which parameters your uh, your you know uh, model is basically generating the same kind of plot understood so this is basically the thing so covariant matrix covariance basically inverse matrix is basically one by sigma square understood which i am going to talk about in my later videos but as you can understand it what is the log probability and so this is the important things 
chi square you understood what is the chi square defining the log likelihood is basically the probability of this one i am taking the log and this is now becoming a log probability which is again this is the most important right now uh another thing is that we can define your uh, aic you have already uh, seen some you know definition of aic so aic is aki iki criteria measurement iki information criteria right that how well your model is doing statistically if you want to compare the two models you can always you know calculate the delta aic or delta bic i am not going into detail but just i am going to show you that what is the aic so basically aic not criteria aik not aic so aic is basically defined as minus 2 into log of probability all right and plus 2 times law uh, number of parameters two times number of parameters this is the simple thing which you can easily find out in the number of papers that they have given in the definition all right and similarly i have the bayesian information criteria if i'm uh saying it uh, correctly minus two of again log of probability like plus number of parameters n parameters times times log of number of data so how many data points you have and you can calculate the aic and bic which is again a most important part because again it will give you that okay how well your model is basically doing so aic information or bic information is again a most important part now you understood everything like what we call chi square what is the meaning of likelihood what we call prior and this is also called the posterior this likelihood is also called you know determining the theta called posterior and again some fancy english word but you as you understand that you know you have to keep it everything so simple there is nothing you know uh, nothing alien over here right so everything has some meaningful name and all these things so because you go, why why i'm telling you that because when i was uh, you know learning these things it was in a very uh, i was uh, whenever i was going in some kind of conferences uh, hearing, uh, hearing those names, like, you know, very thing that, okay, well, I don't know that they are doing some kind of, you know, very great physics, but there is nothing, you know, it's, again, it's a very simple one and you can do it. Now, come to the coding part. Coding, you know, whenever you do the coding, coding has to be very simple. Once your mathematics is good, you have to understand a little bit of Python code and then everything is simple. Now, the simplest you write the code is the best one, all right. So first of all, you have to, in the coding part, you have to have some kind of, you know, preambles. And this preamble is that it's importing some information, importing some libraries. So over here, you have some libraries. First of all, I'm going to import whatever my OS is, import my OS. First of all, I'm writing this code. Keeping in mind that I'm working in Windows. All right. And I'm running my code in VS code. All right. Using uh windows python also i am going to show you that in the windows i am also use linux subsystem and for the speed purpose i am right running my code running in a linux environment linux subsystem all right so i have a windows computer i am using vs code to write a jupyter kind of you know environment and also I am writing in you know, a Python this whole thing. You can use cluster and all these things, but keep in mind that I can I can use VS code as well as I can run my uh, code in uh, uh, a, C, uh, a command prompt. All right. I have a Linux subsystem. I am running in my Windows and I will also show you that how we can run this in the Linux subsystem. For that, I have to write few libraries that is most important. First library is import OS. Again, I'm going to import my EMCE because this is where the sampling takes place. I will write import and for the you know plotting purpose, matplotlib dot pyplot pyplot as plot plt. So for the plot, you know, I am uh, importing matplotlib dot plot is the standard matplotlib as you are seeing in any paper some standard kind of plotting technique. This is where they are using as a plot. Now, one of the most important aspect is that numpy. 
NumPy for numerical things, it is an extremely powerful library. NumPy as NP. Now I can import, import, uh, let us say some pool. So if I want to do the multiprocessing because I have a 12 CPU in my computer, so I can use the pool because I want to, you know, uh, run this everything very fast. I don't want to wait. I want to, don't want to waste my time or uh, just you know, relying on one CPU, but I have a 12 CPU. You can you know, check, check it at how many cores you have. Depending on the number of cores, you can, you know, have the different amount of CPU. Now I want to see that, okay, fine, how these things are, you know, fast and so on. So this is for your own purpose, TQDM, import TQDM, right? And there are another things which can be like, uh, which I will show you when I'm writing the code, because this is the most fundamental thing. Something I am also forgetting these things. Never mind. Now, this is the preamble of the coding. Another thing is called, we can say the body of the code. So body, when we have writing the body, first of all, I'm going to define my model. So I'm writing that, okay, define my model, which is, let us say Hubble. And I have this red shift and some parameters, which I am writing at P params or something like that. So whenever I am writing some block, so this is kind of a block. All right. So this is a block. Now in this, this block is completely, completely, you know, uh, disconnected from rest of the body. So this is how we defining. So define DEF, some kind of name and this is the parenthesis, which says that, okay, what are the things over here? Z is where I'm giving some kind of, you know, by my own side. Parameters are the parameters of my model. And then these are semicolons. Now, what are my parameters? My parameters are omega m0. So I'm writing it O m0. And let us see H0 is equal to my params. So parameters is basically will be your array defining as this one so one quantity over here another quantity over here so this quantity is corresponding to omega m0 and this quantity becomes h0 so where these params come i will show you next and when it is done i am going to define your that okay hubble again i am writing hubble but there is no requirement that okay this hubble is this hubble same no you can take any name so in your python you have to write h0 sorry i have to write h0 like this star multiply and then you have to write over here this is something called np dot squared because squared is not an inbuilt function so you have to take it from your numpy and then there is a parenthesis i am writing om0 multiply by 1 plus z and when you try to write the power thing make 2 star over here and 3 and plus i am writing 1 minus om0 and then parenthesis close. So I have defined my Hubble. That is what you, know, we, you, don't, you don't have to write H over here, right? Or you can just write. But the thing is that this is the most, most important. But this is basically gives you that what is your H. So I have written what is my written that already written your Hubble. This Hubble I'm talking about. This is not Hubble. Okay. So once you are returning it, everything is finished. So now your block is finished. This is the body and one of the person is called the block. All right. Now, another thing is that, all right. Okay, parameter is omega m0 h0. So how we can, you know, use this block into the, into our, you know, analysis. So for that, I will first define my chi square, right? So first of all, I am defining all my pieces. So let us say this is my chi square, right? So chi square is basically have the data part, the theory part and the error part. I'm writing this error but all these things are necessary. So first of all, I will take a difference. Difference is equal to D minus T. And then what I'm going to use that chi square basically. Chi square is equal to NP dot sum. I'm saying that, okay, D minus T square by the error square. And that's all. And when I will, when you have done this one, then I again return this. Mind it, you can use anything over here and equal to because this is now some kind of an empty box and it is storing everything over here. So this is a variable, but you cannot use anything over here. If you are using D, then the same, the same uh, name has to be go over here. 
if you are using the same t over here same t over here because these are the inputs so this is link between these and this here you can do anything but here you have to mind it that if i am writing error then i am writing error over or understood so well i should write when i am writing a square this is the a square and similarly over here error times times a square and so this is the most important thing you have to understand that what you, you have to first understand the order how you are you know uh, giving some parameters so if you are writing parameters and you will say that oh, this is the positioning you have to most important part position is most important part second thing yet you cannot use you cannot write d over here you can just say that okay i am writing dd over here no how will it understand that what is basically going on so you have first defining your you know the things over here and you are going to use that thing like this understood so this is my chi square what is the another thing that we have to uh, we are uh, actually saying that okay fine how we are you know uh using uh, calculating to the data so first of all we have to import the data right so data import is, is the most important part let us say i have a data file which is osd.txt so first of all i am writing data is equal to np dot load ohd.txt now when you write see the oh text you will see that one column is for the red shift another column is for z and another column is for error and there is no comma and so on if there is no comma this is this will work and if there is a comma then there is there is your to your delimiter all right which i'm going to talk about in later on data now i am importing z data let us say my z data what is the z data z data is from this data so i'm going to write over here data this is column and this is the first column all right now similarly i'm going to write the s data s data will be like data second column similarly h error i can write here error because i have already used the error over here or h error you can just write there is no requirement of so data this one and the second column am i right so these are these have you have plotted but that now the question is that all right you have done everything but the problem is that you have defined your chi square but we have to also define the log chi square and all these things you can also define over here that okay fine just uh, why not you know you can choose anything okay, i will choose any everything but now from the model i have to also calculate my h so because these are the experiment thing right these are the experiment data and experiment has now you want to compare it with your model because h you are finding it experimentally so you are from the model you want to find the h with respect to that red shift all right so if you are if you are confused over here that okay fine let us say your h is like this and z is like this for for one z you have certain h this is your experiment now you have given a model so for that same h where is your h this is your theory if it is overlapping then it is fine if it is not overlapping then it is fine similarly for all the points of the experiment at the same time you will calculate this ht and so on some ht will be greater some ht will be this one depending on your uh, omega m0 and h0 that you are choosing so that's why you know parameters the priors are most important part so how we can say we can over here we can just say that, okay fine i want to also calculate this hubble chi square or you know uh, theoretically i want to calculate the hubble chi square so this is called hubble chi let us say i am naming it hubble chi and i am just saying that okay fine parameters it will just have some parameters so first of all i will say that okay i have a theoretical h from the model i want to calculate i will write everything as a zero i will make an array and this is your zero and how many zeros i require depending on length of z data all right what is the length of my z depending on the length of the z i will have this much amount of similarly if i am defining my prior if any prior is between omega m0 let us say omega m0 is let us say 0.5 or i can just say that uh, if not if not om0 in between this 0 and 
एट जीरो टू बी फोर्टी टू हंड्रेड इफ नॉट ऑल राइट देन माई रिटर्न दैट इफ पैरामीटर इज जेनरेटिंग एनी पॉइंट फ्रॉम द एम सी एम सी इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली जनरेट एनी पॉइंट इफ दिस पॉइंट इज नॉट इन दिस रेंज जस्ट रिटर्न माइनस एन पी डॉट इन्फिनिटी ऑल राइट और एल्स यू डोंट हैव राइट एनीथिंग सो एल्स यू विल राइट और You can just say that okay, I am going to write four i in range of what of z data because z data is over here. So whenever I am going to going to use z data, there will be no problem. Z data. So for i in range z, this one again. So I will I want to calculate my h t for each i. So z data I have let us say I have forty points. So first of all, it will take i is equal to one. Or zero, first data H T I is equal to this Hubble that I have already you know defined my model H Hubble. So this is how it will calculate. This is Hubble, all right. So this is my Hubble. It will first take Z data. So Z data of I, all right. Z data of I will just simply tell you that what is my Z data, and you have to you know seeing that Z data I is basically Z over here. so i am invoking z and z data has to be matched the positioning has to be matched and then we are going to use the parameters i am already using params over here i have defined params so i am writing over here params all right so this has now calculated st so we will get the complete list once it is done what i am going to use is that return now this is again has to become like this let return ht now because st is having all this zero it will take it will for loop and generate all the 43 points let us say there are 43 and then return my ht all right so now you have theoretical st uh no once it is done sorry once it is done then what i going to use is that once i have st then in over here i can just simply write the chi square right so again i am going to use hubble chi let us say h u b c h i is basically the chi square that i have written i have used this function chi square chi square and i am going to use the s data so d4 data so i am going to use s data experimental data theoretical data is basically ht ht because you know when it is done everything you will get over here ht right H T. Now error. Error is H error. H error. So it will simply use this block and it will not return error. It will return chi square C H I S T. So the chi is square corresponding to the Hubble parameter. I will get over here, right? So return. What it will return me? Return H U B C H I chi square. and i am going to again defining that okay defining my log hubble or log of this one the log i am i have already defined over here that uh log of posterior minus 0.5 into chi square so again you don't require to you know you can always uh, do this one i can use parameters all right and i can just simply say that okay return minus 0.5 and chi square Zero point five chi square with parameter, right? And then we got. So this is the my return. So now you have calculated the posterior. So this is for the posterior. Now come to the most important part. So this is the complete body. Now where is the working things? How we can you know start, uh, you know running this one? Now I have to write some code for corresponding the MCMC. Now in this MCMC we are going to use EMC double E. right and for this emc double e what we have to do is that first of all we have to decide how many walkers are there so if you have two parameters then uh, the best way to take is the n walker is let us say 20 is enough all right you don't have to you know uh, you know take so many walkers if you have large number of you know uh, parameters then you can choose greater uh, 
walkers but for the very small things the ratio is not great you know you don't have to go too much so dimension of the parameter is two because there are only two parameters which, which we want to fit so five times is same so one can use also that okay now i have a greater cpu i can use 100 para and workers the result will be always same and dimension is two right and how many iterations you work you want let us say i want thousand iterations or ten thousand iterations so if you want a very good result with the two parameters uh five thousand is enough or like ten thousand is at most ten thousand you require if you have a large number of you know data set, large number of parameter space let us say n dimension would be three or four or five then you can go up to twenty thousand and so on otherwise there is no requirement all right now once you have done first of all you have to tell the mcmc that what is your initial position initial position is extremely important so initial position i'm going to write here random and then i'm going to uh, write over here uniform all right i'm giving you all this remark over here and then what I have to do is that I will show you what I'm going to write over here. Then I'm going to show you that, okay, I'm going to use sampler. Sampler means that now sample it. I'm telling that EMCE, which is I have important already. I'm going to use in sample. Now sampler, which is again a function over uh, in the EMCE. Take n walker. All right. Take n dimension. And then fit your log hubble. So this is log hover. It will take this block and invoke all the parameters. And what is known is known. There is no requirement. And it will and this is where it will first take it. And all these things, because everything is inside like this. Right? Because it is computing the final thing. This is your log of posterior. So you have to run all these things, and then you know it will uh, the whole running process will go from here. This is your mind. This is your the driver seat. All right, this is the engine and this engine first go over here and everything is inside this one. All the blocks are basically inside this, one, right? Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the samples from here. Once it is, once it has run, no, I have to also run, running, running this one. So how it will run? It will be running that sampler dot run. All right, MCMC. This is again a keyword. You don't have to do anything. Then take a position and do the it risks and this will automatically run and then you have you can extract the samples from here samples is equal to from the samplers sampler dot get chain what is the meaning of god get chain get chain is basically tells you that okay the number of parameters that you have taken at zero and omega m zero how they are converging with each step with each iterations and they, then you will get the value of those things and then you have to import the corner, corner plot that you have already seen the triangular plots. All right. So import corner or you can just say that, okay, I'm going to define here import corner, right? You can just say that, okay, fine, corner dot corner. And then samples or I've already given everything that samples. And then labels. Level is basically first of all my level is omega m0. Never forget about it. And then I have this is for the string part and at zero, right? And you want to save you want to save this one with the text that okay. What are these channel or you want to you know do the corner plot? Now I'm going to show you that how we are going to do the coding. I'm gonna write it. Several things have been written, but this is the way this is your you know MCMC the engine. This is where everything happens, but all these blocks are, you know, converging towards this one. And this is the data, the data thing that we have invoked. This is basically body, how our model we have defined. This is the library. Now I'm going to extract my VS code. And if you don't have the VS code, you can just simply download it, write VS code and you know how to do it. So first of all, what you have to do from the VS code, you will do, you will get nothing over here. Now, since you are getting it because I have already imported it, but you have to first of all go to the file and open folder. In the open folder, I have made some kind of, you know, VS code over here. And whenever you are having, you know, when you write the code, you make a folder. Let us say I have made the folder, my coding, and I'm going to select that folder and it have imported everything. Mind it, 
when you will write download this hubble data as you can see over here this is the hubble data the first column is for the for this one the data now you can see over here 0 0.2 then there is a space so whenever there is a space the it will automatically read that it is not in this column all right there is a one space over here 29.6 so these these three distinct you know columns uh red shift hubble data and the corresponding error hubble error all right so you have you must have the folder and in the folder you have to copy this hubble text now i have going to made one of the notebook all right you can just say that okay i am going to write a new file how is the file is, is, do you want to make a python file or do you want to make the jupyter file if you want to make the jupyter file you can just go over here and you will have the jupyter invoke and before that you have to you know go to this extension part and you have to uh, download this jupyter all right so when you will write jupyter it will automatically download it and then you will good you are good to go right now since Jupyter is in my over here, you can use this one. If you want to uh, explore this one, that okay, I want new file, but it has to be Python file so that I can run in the Chrome prompt. This is where. And now you have to you know save it. That okay, fine. I want to save it. Save as whatever the name, but dot py. All right. Now I don't require this one. I don't require this in United. One. Don't save. Now what I am writing. Also, I will also, you know, upload it in my uh, GitHub account. All right. Import OS as promised corner. SignSpy to integrate, although I I don't require to integrate right now, but you can have. But in your future case, when I'm going to uh, use the supernovae data, I require in, uh, integrate. From the matplotlib, I am writing RC, RC for the latex type of, you know, uh, plotting. RC, RC, uh, it will use some text and use text is equal to true now plot rc whatever the labels i'm going to write it will you know have some kind of font size which is 12 multiprocessing i'm going to use import and the multiprocessing is happened to be you know pool and cpu count because i want to you know also count my how many cpu i have import emce import ipython dot display display math display if you want to work in the jupyter you can you know always uh just click and you will the output will be shown over here but this will not work if you will write the python if you want to you know compute in the uh so called command prompt you have to omit it from tqdm import tqdm or just you can write import tqdm for this is uh, this is serves the purpose of the processing time that okay how this is running here i have defined the data and you can see that h data h error you can i can just say that error of square is equal to 1 by h error square right error square is this is how also i can you know plot it just go like this i don't require it but you know you can print the data you can see that here you are, you have having the s data and all these things just, you can see that i am pressing shift and enter and it will automatically run i am using python 3.12.2 mind it so now again it will take a little bit of time as i can show that uh, because if you are if you in the vs code it has own virtual command prompt and because of that you know junction it is taking quite of time you know some of these things will not be in your uh, python so what you have to do is that you can just write code over here markdown is for you know anything you want to you know specify some command you have to write pip install let us say i don't have emce shift enter you have to connect with the code as it is already satisfied i don't require it i just delete it so pip install emc pip install tqdm pip install numpy this is how you are going to install everything. So I'm just, you know, mark it down for your subpip install uh, name of package. Right. Now our data, loading data, jet data and all these things. This is how you can extract for the purpose of this one. Seeing that, that thing, I am defining the model OM0, H0 parameters, return H value. Chi square I have defined data minus theory. Chi square is sum data minus theory by error into square. Now this error I am going to invoke over here h error because h error is my you know, quantity. And second, the model parameters. Now in this model parameters, I am you know having Hubble chi. So omega m0 h0 is my model parameters. HT is np0. First of all, length of what is the z data? If not if not in this range, whenever I am defining some parameters, if not in the range, then return 
the negative infinity come out if it is in the range then for i in the range of length of that data if you just you know uh, choose to print that what is the length of that data right so i'm just writing over here length of jet data and then it will just give you the 43 length is my jet data right so you can do a lot of thing length of jet data sti it is again making an array h model is for the h model that i have already defined where is my h model h model this is the h model you have to get the same name now for the jet uh where is this one for the jet data jet data i take all the data points in the data sets right only these things and i want to calculate the corresponding s theoretical because this is s69 it will give me some another thing right s data and then there is a parameters now this parameters having om0 and h0 parameters is already there over here is this right right over here om0 h0 parameters come on i i well i don't require over here also there is no problem all right parameters Hubble chi is equal to the chi square function as data as theoretical data as h is so it has now become the list everything is stored in st and then there is an h error h error so it will go so return my Hubble chi so chi is this is the so it will calculate from this chi square and return the Hubble chi right so this model parameter is basically give you the Hubble chi whatever you are right chi square so this is basically chi square of the hubble right now h log i'm going to define minus 0 0.5 into model parameters because from here it is basically uh so i may have written wrongly right so remind it that h log i have defined minus 0 0.5 into chi square of the hubble data so here i am actually counting uh, calculating the hubble chi so now this is the parameters and take the hubble model parameter of this one if not I am also again defining that you know sometimes it is you know giving you some uh, terrible result and if not np is infinite s log so, so let us say s log becomes because again there is some kind of log of something so it may become you know negative of log and it will become infinity so if not in infinity if not this one uh, uh if if it is not running or is finite if not an infinite so if the log of a star becomes infinite then return infinity otherwise return as log this is now the engine set first i am defining and uh, walker and dimension i am not, not defining over here and dimension so if you are not parallelizing it first of all you have to set the initial position np dot random dot uniform low whatever your para parameter position are as you can understand how i am defining my parameters where is my model my model is over here parameters this parameter is omega m0 h0 so you have to define the range of this one the low is for 0 0.001 i can just take 0 there is no problem high you can go 0 0.5 30 to 99 you can just choose 40 no problem size is equal to n walker and n dimension 200 this one sampler is equal to emc dot enable sample n walker n dimension and s log like because s log like is again the mastermind s log like because this is what i am you know willing and sampler dot run mcmc p0 10,000 iterations progress is equal to true samples is equal to sampler dot j so if i am just running these things it will simply run it and i can just simply tell you that okay how this 100 looks like oh h double is not defined sorry i have to first run this one second chi square i'm going to run it third this guy fourth this guy now you can see this 100 percent has run 400 one right now you will not get any result now what we have to do is that i am going to discard sampler dot thing so i am going to get the chain the result first of all whatever the initial one i have to you know you know discard it that okay i am going to take the 10 initial steps or 10 initial you know result i'm going to thin uh, and over here thin is basically you know percentage wise let us say it is sorry it is how you know so you can see the speed for the one code if i am having just only one code it is 35 iterations per second so 35 iterations per second you know you are using just a very simple model that's why this is the speed but if you use the pantheon plus data sets the, st the you know you will have that one iteration per second or in one second or two iteration per second or in one second there is two sec in two seconds there is only one iteration right so these are things you know can happen 
so i am taking 10 uh, i am discarding 10 iterations i am you know uh, flatting it that let us say it has 1000 i am going to reduce by 2 percentage and then flatting that whatever it is all the data has will be flatted in the parallelization the concept is very simple i am you know again uh, defining any iteration any iteration you can just uh, choose to be you know 5000 because now i have the more advanced thing n walker 200 you can just say that okay i am considering let us 100 n dimension is 2 because the number of model parameters again the same thing will go everywhere but over here if you want to use the parallelization n cpu is equal to cpu count first of all it will count it print the cpu now with pool how many processors you are want because i have 12 process 12 cpu you can see that this is the print of 12 cpu i don't want all my cpu to you know accommodate because i also want to uh, do some other work and all these things so that's why i have reduced to seven so processes is equal to seven as a pool sample dot emc so whatever i have written over here just copy and paste over in this one with pool as pool sample but over here n walker n dimension and h log like pool is equal to and over here i am again one that okay progress is equal to true and once it is done then it will take samples is equal to sampler dot get chain discard 10 thin flat now if you use the parallelization with the vs code again it will take it will not give you the result because again the parallelization does not work well with the jupiter you have to understand it your code is not uh bad parallelization does not work uh very well with uh with this uh, jupiter right or vs now i have to you know uh, find the parameters so you can just copy this one that i have to use the median of omega m and h 0 mc so this is v1 some you know mapping that some lambda v v1 v2 minus v1 so 68 percent some medium 95 percent medium and all these things so these are taking the samples of 16 percent 50 percent 85 84 percent this is the you know, standard thing you will see print om h uh, 0 print om mc h 0 mc so here you can see that this is the uh result of uh, omega mc this is the error, uh, the lower error and the upper error. This is again the edge zero, 70.5 and you can see over here 1.4. This is the error 1.44 is the uh, lower and upper error. So now flat sample sampler dot get change the flat is equal to two. You can just take it and level. I am now I want to, you know, having some, you know, nice uh, latex type of thing that what is the omega m 0 0.26, 0 0.002. You can see that minus 0 0.002. And again, R I zero for I in range n dimension is the number of parameters you have. M C M C is equal to N P percentile flat chain 16, 50, 84 percentile. You can check Q is equal to N P dot difference of M C M C text R this one. You can use this one for the you know very nice presentation of Mega M and zero and display this. So display it will give you the display of this one. That where is the where is your parameters? If I want to uh, plot the corner plot, again, same thing. How many parameters you have? Parameters, this one thin. I'm not going to, I'm not using this one, these things basically. All right. Or you can use, uh, you can use that a thin has to be, let us say, two and uh, it is one over here. So for I in range, something because I want triangular play, a uh, triangular, you know, plane type of plot. Access is equal to access one access dot plot sampler dot get chain thin i'm using discard thin two discard is 10 all right color is equal to black alpha is equal to 0 0.1 lw line of width is equal to 0 0.15 axis of this one you will find it this is the plot layout and the corner corner dot corner samples the samples i have already defined is level is equal to parameter so title true colors in the green truth is equal to omega mc it will not work is smooth is smooth the curves is smooth is equal to two level and then i am defining the levels 0 0.68 and 0 0.95 plot density has to be true and plot data points i am saying uh, false and save the figure figure dot save fig corner dot plot and here you can see that omega m0 it is converging you know for each iteration this is the 10000 iteration i had run and you can see the convergence of this one you can easily save it and i am not you know uh, saving this one uh you can also save this one say figure uh with this guy also you can present it that how your uh you know all the model parameters are converging with the number of iterations and here is your absolute fantastic um uh, uh what you can say the 
contour plot as you can see or triangular plot omega mg 0 0.26 plus minus thing this is here if you take the median this is your ASST 8 percent this is the 95 percent uh, region and you will see that at zero to be this one this is also have been written over here and all samples and samples this is good now i have taken away because uh, you know i have to show you the everything so you can just take uh, i am going to you know make the python file i am not using the, any jupyter so you just copy everything but do not copy the uh, do not copy this uh, libraries because it will not use this one so from a methodlib import rc you don't require import this one second thing is that from ipython because you are not using ipython do not require it remove it i am loading it model this one defining s log parameter n walker 300 and dimension 2 any duration 50000 i will show you for the 10000 10000 and 100 i have written the pool all right and cpu count everything is done now printing it the printing omega mc but i have to you know write in a text file that's why i'm going to write it discard i am discarding uh, 10 2 percent i am thinning it a label this one for with the open math info or text so you have to make a file with math info or text you are going to write it as a file for i in the range diameter mcmc i am going to write everything that what is my omega mg run s0 mc and then again i am going to define parameters there is no requirement of defining two times parameters if i have not defined it yeah i am not defining it parameters this one thin and discard i am defining it figure axis how this will plot it again the same thing axis plot and all this thing corner and corner all these things and boom so i'm going to save first of all and how i'm going to do it first of all in the windows you have to run the command prompt cmd command prompt will open so this is my user i am going to write over here wsl so once you write wsl your uh, linux subsystem will automatically start all right so now i will mount it mount my e drive because everything is in my e drive cd slash mount my e drive over here go to uh my vs code and again go to my coding so if you have already you know made this thing and you have maybe something right my coding let me again check my folder name the spelling my coding I don't know. My coding, right? And then again, slash. Yes. Now I press ls. I have lambda CDM pi. So what I would just write over here the Python 3 because I have, I have already installed it. And whenever you write install any Python, it will just come as a Python 3. And then Python 3 L press tab lambda CDM pi and over here, boom just press enter you can see that there are 12 cpu and now see the you know uh, uh speed 106 approximately 110 iteration per second i am using the 7 cpu and it will just simply take uh, one less than one minute to you know pro to process 10000 uh, chains or 10000 iterations with the n number of workers is basically 100 so now you will see the results and all the corner plots just hang on a second for one minute so this is you know very interesting and amazing thing now you got the idea that how this one thing uh, works you can always write uh, your code for the differential equations you know following the same uh, you know uh, recipe and you know how the mcmc work i think this is good and if you you know uh, you know if you have if you you know uh, face any problem with the day with, with the running the code and all these things you can always uh, you know comment or you can uh, take the help of chat gpt i will also make a video that how you can you know take a help of chat gpt to write uh, many complex codes because again the chat gpt is one of the crucial thing this uh, era uh, ai is has become a significant uh, it's going to play a great role I, I will also show that you know you can use the neural uh, network to also getting information out from the data so as you understand the machine learning so from the oeg data i can also use the machine learning concept and i want to estimate my OHDNs. so this is the printing that omega mg 0 0.257 let us see that how everything has done so it has already updated corner plot one this is the beautiful curve that you can see all the data is about 68 percent 95 percent of this thing right and 
मैथ इन्फू एज कम आउट टू बी ओमेगा एम जीरो जीरो पॉइंट टू सिक्स माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू एच जीरो सेवेंटी पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो माइनस वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव दिस इज द लोअर एंड दिस इज द अपर सो आई होप दिस वीडियो इज वेरी हेल्पफुल टू यू इफ यू इट इज हेल्पफुल बाई एनी मीन्स एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रूव इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यू नो क्लाबरेट विद मी इन एनी प्रोजेक्ट रिलेटेड टू फिजिक्स और राइटिंग सम कोड यू कैन यू आर वेरी वेलकम So this is the minute cap signing out see you next time